Honestly, it would be so quick. I mean, I think that's the thing that inspired me so much about the flower essences initially is it was so fast. Like I would see people come in with these heavy, heavy, heavy things on their heart. Mm -hmm. And they come in a month later and be like, you know what? I realized that there's nothing I could do about that. So I just put it down. And it was so liberating for them. And it was so unbelievable for me to see them. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Clark and my mission is to inspire, motivate, and empower you. And most of all, I want you to wake up. So with functional medicine, we can discover what causes infertility and eventually reverse the condition. Today I'm welcoming Katie Hess to the podcast and we're digging into flower elixirs and how they can help on your journey to conceive. Katie Hess is a flower alchemist, author of Flower Revolution and founder of Lotus Way, one of the world's leading flower apothecaries. With her signature elixirs featured in O, the Oprah Magazine, the New York Times, and the LA Times, her flower-empowered community is thriving in over 15 countries. Katie's magic has sparked a fire with leading brands from flower lounges to exclusive scents and products, apothecaries to blending bars. Katie has infused her transformative touch into collaborations with the world's top spas, beauty stores, and more. Whether it's a retreat in the hot springs of Iceland, her meditations, or her travels to find the planet's rarest flowers, her work all boils down to bringing people into a whole new world, both outside and in. Check out her website at lotusway.com, L-O-T-U-S-W-E-I.com. And before we jump into today's show, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this to make sure you never miss an episode. Hey, Katie, excited for you to join me here today. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, if you could share your journey with us and how you came to do this really cool work of working with flowers. Yeah, so after I graduated college, then I asked myself, what am I really here to do? And I left the country for a few years, traveled, I spent some time living in other countries. I ended up meeting a teacher, an expert in flower essences outside the country, which makes sense because... Hmm, there's, a, there's so much more awareness of this type of healing modality outside of the United States. I met a teacher from Spain and studied with him, apprenticed with him and some other teachers. And then I came back to the United States and saw such a huge window of opportunity in terms of the flower essences and awareness. I worked with people for 10 years first, one-on-one, -on -one, and you know, meeting every month, seeing what's working in your life, what's not working, and then making little bottles for them to take. And after that process, I was just blown away. I mean, at a certain point in my consulting career, if you want to call it, I just thought like, I need to reach the world with this. The kind of transformations I was seeing in people were unbelievable. And I don't know if I ever thought that I would have a product company, but I, at a certain point, I just felt a responsibility to the earth, to the planet, you know, to reach, to be able to reach more people because it was just so incredibly transformative and effective. Yeah, that's amazing. I know. Yeah. I've looked at all your, your website there and you scoured the earth for these, these flowers. So I find that it's like so exciting. So but first, I guess, as we get into the, into that, so what is the difference between so flower essences and elixirs? So yeah, is there a difference? Like I, I, people might've heard of those Bach flower remedies. Right. So it's a, it's very similar process. And oftentimes people will even get confused between what are flower essences and essential oils. Yeah. Like most of the, most Americans are familiar with essential oils and aromatherapy. They have a really strong scent. It's like the juice of the plant. And what we're dealing with with flower essences is more like the, the way that it makes you feel. So if you are walking in a field of daisies, it feels totally different than if you're walking in a rose garden or peony garden or pine forest, right? We know innately that different plants and flowers make us feel differently. And so what we're essentially doing is capturing the way it makes you feel and getting it into a form that we can experience it on a daily basis, even if we're indoors, you know, under fluorescent lights in our offices, not able to spend time outdoors. So elixirs, we just use that name because it really draws attention to the fact that it's something you're taking internally. And in the beginning, I think there was a lot of confusion about fragrance. Is it a fragrance? So flower essences are a solar infusion. It's like a fancy word to, to say it's like the sunlight is what 
transfers the energetic imprint, the energy, the chi, the homeopathic essence, whatever you want to call it, from the flower into water. And then we add alcohol to preserve that. So essentially what you end up with is water, alcohol, we add honey, and it's taken internally. Traditionally, people would drink the dew from the tops of flowers. So it's similar to that process. Oh, luckily, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Luckily we don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I think you said it sort of, it tastes like honeysuckle when you, when you have these little, and I was mean to, to, I was actually going to order some before our interview, but then I thought, well, maybe I should just talk to you ahead of time. Cause I think there's a whole way of how you, or maybe the flower picks you. I don't know. So I, I wanted to, before I did that, I wanted to, <laughs> to talk with you about it, but yeah. So they taste like honeysuckle. Anything else you want to share there? Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to figure out what, what's good for you. I mean, well, I should actually answer how do they work? Cause most people are wonder like, mm. well, how does that work? So it works through your acupuncture system. This is very much like getting an acupuncture treatment, but without the needles. So if you can imagine that, you know, we're these energetic bodies of light and we have all these different frequencies and waves coming off of us much in the sense of like a cell phone yeah there are all these invisible waves coming from a cell phone that we can't see that facilitate our ability to make calls and send videos and texts and all the crazy stuff we do so we have the same capacity it just we also can't see it flowers and plants have the same capacity the thing is is that our bodies are so in tune and nourished by those types of invisible waves from plants and flowers you know, we know from using computers and cell phones as much as we love them, that they can exhaust our physical body. Whereas plant life has a certain particular kind of energy that really drives with ours. And it's like a, like a tune up. And so there's a flower on the planet for just about anything you could imagine, sleep, sadness, anger, mom issues, dad issues, jealousy, fear of flying, I mean, you name it, like anything you, anything the human mind could ever dream up as an issue, there's a flower for it. And so then when you were working with people one-on-one, -on -one, how would you, you would have the consultation and what would maybe take us through that? What would it look like? Yeah. So, I mean, very conversational, you know, like what, what's bugging you, what's going on? What do you want your ideal life to look like? If in six months from now you had your ideal life, what would that look like? How would you feel? And what I notice is that when you're taking flower essences regularly, the amount of sort of like normal personal growth that we go through is rapidly accelerated. So like what we might experience in a year gets squished down into a couple months. Sort of like it just clears away the static so that we can be more clear, more insightful, more ourselves in a sense. So yeah, I mean, initially just sort of like a dump, like how I feel, what's happening, what's not working, what's working great. And then over time, those things would change and evolve and things that were big issues just would float away. And honestly, it would be so quick. I mean, I think that's the thing that inspired me so much about the flower essences initially is it was so fast. Like I would see people come in with these heavy, heavy, heavy things on their heart mm -hmm. and they'd come in a month later and be like, you know what? I realized that there's nothing I can do about that. So I just put it down and it was so liberating for them. And it was so unbelievable for me to see them put that down so quickly, things that they may have been carrying for years, you know? <laughs> so I thought, man, everybody should have the ability to be able to try this experience. Yeah. Cause people listening to this podcast obviously are dealing with, with infertility, which in itself is, you know, impacts all aspects of your life. And so to have something like this, it's just a nice add on to help with emotions and things like that. So how, how would you, I guess maybe just take us through that consultation again of what, how you end up recommending a specific elixir and what that looks like. And I mean, at the time when I was doing consultations, so I'm not doing consultations anymore at the time when I was, Honestly, I went from a more intellectual process, like this person is experiencing sadness. Okay, they must need this flower. Those are in the very, very early days. After that, I realized that intuition was much more effective. And so I would sort of, in a sense, close my eyes and reach into the box and grab out the bottles. Mm -hmm. And I spent many years testing that, making sure that that was, in essence, the most effective way. I realized that it was. I would play these little tricks and start lining up the bottles before they even came in. And then, you know, it was, it was uncanny how effective that was. Nowadays, since I'm not doing consultations, I really love the fact that 
flowers are teachers and they are mirrors and they reflect back to us how we feel and it is so dang effortless it's like like i was talking about how we innately feel a difference of how different flowers make us feel so simply by looking at flowers and seeing what we're most drawn to that's what we need in the moment the most so like we don't even have to get i remember going into health food stores you know years ago looking at different flower essences and thinking like oh you know i would take these quizzes and then think like oh i'm so screwed up like there's i have like 50 things wrong with me i need everything where do i start <laughs> give me the whole garden <laughs> but this is so easy it's you just like which one am I attracted to? We think it's arbitrary. It's not. If you go into a flower shop looking for something for your mother, you will, if you're thinking of her, you'll immediately be drawn to what she might need. Or if you're looking for something for yourself, like, hmm, I want to bring myself some cut flowers today. We think it's arbitrary. It's not. That flower has something, some sort of message or quality that is looking to be magnified or enhanced within ourselves. And the process just happens naturally. I think we knew that as children. We forget that as we grow older, but kids know that, right? We knew that as kids, mm -hmm. that, that plants have certain qualities and that we have a level of communication that's happening that's just simply not verbal. Yeah, like I'm going for a walk in my neighborhood just in this, the springtime there, smelling all the, oh, what's that one? I love this, this, the smell of this tree. The, oh, the lilacs, like the lilacs. And you could smell all, as on, on this walk, I could smell all the scents of the, the plants as I'm, and I'm walking along. I'm like, and, and especially after it, it had just rained, I'm like, wow, what a, yeah, because I just love scents. And so yeah, that's, that's why this topic was really, <laughs> really uh, interesting to me. So, okay, so, so the difference between uh, flower essences and essential oils. Yeah, essential oils have a scent. They're very strong. Like, for example, when women are pregnant, there are certain essential oils to steer away from, certain ones to bring in. With flower essences, it's really a relief and very liberating because you can literally use any flower essence you want when you're trying to get pregnant, nursing. Um, you can take any flower essence you want. There's no, because there's no actual plant parts in the remedy, it's just the homeopathic essence, if you want to call it that, or the energy of the plant. It's safe, super safe, super gentle, and there's, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. That's what I love about it. Okay, yeah, that's great. Yeah, because some of the essential oils before ovulation, and there's contraindications and things like that. And typically, I would say flower essences mainly work on emotional, mental, spiritual. So whereas like if we're talking about like an herbal tincture, an herbal tea, that's really like the body of the plant working for the body. Essential oils kind of like the blood, the circulatory and immune system of a plant that's really helping us on that level, you know, with phytochemicals and that type of thing. Flower essences is kind of like the mind, the heart or the consciousness of a plant. And so it's working for us on us in those levels. However, with one caveat, I would say, what I've noticed, and we don't publicize this information on our website because you have to be careful about claims that you make. Mm -hmm. Even though flower essence is really mostly focused on emotional, mental, spiritual, I have seen remarkable results in terms of the physical body with regulating cycles, hmm. uh, making it like clockwork, removing PMS symptoms, you know, women who have like really terrible cramps every month with their periods or say they haven't had a period in four months and they're trying to figure out what the heck's going on with my cycle. There are flower essences like pomegranate, for example, that will help make the cycle regulated like clockwork. And <laughs> then you have the other problem is like you have no PMS and you don't even know what's coming. So then you really have to watch your calendar to make sure it's, you know, so you're that like, you're prepared. Uh, and I've seen that actually with very small hate to say the word dosages, like use. So for example, with in the flower essence world, we typically recommend you take it about five times a day. So if you're taking them internally, you might take five drops in the mouth five times a day. Or if that seems too tedious and crazy and life is busy, you just put a whole dropper full in your water bottle and go and then just, you know, drink your water bottle throughout the day. I have noticed in terms of regulating cycles, even just like applying an oil that's been infused with flower essences, that are helpful for the menstrual cycle, even just once or twice a day, it already has that effect. Uh, so that that's one area where I can say physically, there is a pretty remarkable difference. And I think, you know, sometimes when we women are trying to get pregnant, it's like, 
part of the frustration is just not knowing what's up or down with our bodies. Like when, like, how are we actually pinpointing the ovulation day? And if our cycles are all over the place, where that's where so much of the frustration. So if we can just get on that clockwork, like cycle, then at least we are feel more empowered to know what's actually happening in mind. Right. (laughs) So, So pomegranate, or is it better for someone to do, to figure out intuitively what's going to be good for them or yeah. How, yeah, I mean, so I should say the pomegranate flower essence is inside a blend that we have called radiant energy. So if I were trying to get pregnant, and actually just as a woman in general, you know, making my cycles more easeful, I would I would see that remedy as sort of like a support remedy. And, you know, whether it's like using the serum and applying that to my belly every night before I go to bed or in the morning before I get dressed. Uh, that's like sort of a support remedy and then using the method of what you're saying, more intuitive method, more, what am I drawn to? What looks interesting? And then using sort of a more active approach with that flower. Like there could be some emotional thing going on. That's really stressing you out. Maybe you're aware of it. Maybe you're not aware of it. Maybe it's like bubbling under the surface. And so to tackle that issue will relieve a lot of stress and that, that alone is um, very helpful. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess from a science standpoint, standpoint, how is, you know, because we've got, I don't know, with, with our functional testing and things like that, we tend to attract a lot of medical professionals with the science side of things. So to say, you know, we're all intuitive and a lot of, like I worked in corporate for years, the, my intuition was just beat out of me. And now as I'm doing what I love, it's coming, it's coming back and be able to trust that, to know that we're all intuitive. Yeah. What about the science side of things? What do we, what do you say to people who are like, give me the hard facts. What's the data? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, the more of the science is around sort of the philosophy or the concept as a whole. So for example, there are studies coming out that are showing, for example, that bees are not drawn to flowers because of fragrance or color. They're actually drawn to flowers because of the very subtle level of electricity that's being emitted from the flowers. And there's a real communication happening so that they're, the flowers are actually telling the bees, I've been pollinated or I need to be pollinated or I have some nectar for you here um, or steer clear of me, go somewhere else. We know this to be the fact, right? So you can sort of draw inferences that a similar thing would be happening with us as human beings. There are studies coming out of Japan, the medical schools in Japan, showing that there's this huge trend of forest bathing. It's kind of just hitting the United States now. It's a huge thing in Japan. There are 44 certified national forests in Japan for forest bathing because they're showing that by spending time walking through the woods, it dramatically reduces cortisol levels. It dramatically reduces white blood cell count. So there's much less stress and they're showing much less chronic chronic health imbalances and it's being shown that for example if you spend an entire day in nature it will regulate your cortisol levels for a week if you spend a weekend in nature for a month and so they're actually showing also anti anti anti-cancer properties a lot of good prevention data so we can infer from that data that wow, there's really something going on when we're spending time in nature and it's not about the oxygen. So what the kind of research, if you know, in terms of flower essences on my end, it's all empirical. I can tell you from almost two decades of working with people, I see it, I know it, everyone in our community knows it. Can we say there's a double blind clinical study around it? Not yet. <laughs> And it's, and it's funny, I first heard of you actually, because I follow Dr. Kelly Brogan and I was like, oh, what's this Lotus Way thing here? So and she's a, one of my favorite books, the, a, a Mind of Your Own. I think you've been on, I think I saw your, your um, Instagram that you've gone on a retreat with her, or maybe that was, that was your retreat. I'm not sure. But yeah, so she's, you know, a, a trained um, psychiatrist at uh, MIT and Cornell. So she's recommending it. So to me, that was good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we have a handful of MDs that are really supportive. Um, if you've heard of Dr. Christiane Northrup, uh, she's you know the iconic MD for women. Uh, she, yeah. She's a huge fan, and um, you know the book was endorsed by a lot of MDs actually who work with children, 
who are bringing meditation into the medical field. Um, so I think, you know, I always tell people, if you feel skeptical, that is a good thing. That is fabulous. Because if every you know person who came along offered something, we just kind of swallowed it up like, yes, 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 that's not good either. Mm-hmm. So if you feel skeptical, if it sounds a little out there, then I would just say, put it on the shelf, see how you feel about it later, or try it. That's really the only way to know. And it's the most empowering way is to say like, okay, I've tried this. There's nothing that can happen wrong. It's really gentle. There's no side effects. So it's not like pharmaceuticals where you're you know, sometimes taking a gamble with the side effects. This is very safe and gentle. See what happens. Only you will know. Only Mm -hmm. you will know. Mm -hmm. And then that way you're not listening to somebody else. It's really, you know, inside your own heart for yourself. Yeah. So, um, and then as far as maybe talk a little bit about kind of self-awareness, how it helps us that, that sort of that spiritual path of if we're going meditating or journaling, how would we use flower elixirs for that? So I noticed that if someone has never taken flower essences before, there seems to be this sort of cycle that occurs when we start taking them regularly, regularly meaning every day, you know, four to five times a day with a real concerted intention around that. The first month we noticed that it seems like just the edge of life gets softened. So things that used to irritate us seem like "Ah, no big deal. Suddenly we can hear the birds singing. You know, there's just a lightness in our step. We feel like we sleep, we're sleeping better. Uh, It just seems like the hardness of life is lifted. We get into a position where we're more emotionally stable. After that month, uh, it seems like the flower essences start to get to work on a deeper level, showing us things about ourselves that we may not have been aware of. A personal example, I remember... (laughs) taking flower essences and realizing that I actually was not a patient person. Like I, I thought my entire life that I with was you. here with me. <laughs> I always thought like, Oh, I'm so peaceful. I'm so calm. Like most people who know me would say she's really calm. Yeah. That she, nothing ruffles her feathers, but I'm actually really impatient. <laughs> That's my character. Mm-hmm. So when I realized that about myself, it was like, Oh my God, no, no, I'm not at peace with the way things are. I'm impatient. Well, once I saw that, then I could, you know, realize that, make changes, make shifts, or just recognize when it's occurring and chill out. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, the flower essences have this magical quality of being able to show us things in a really gentle way. And then we have a choice what we want to do with that. It's like they're showing us our full potential and our full strength. So after about four months of regular use, Uh, that's when I noticed that been long enough that someone is experiencing a pretty big shift on the inside. So enough to notice the snowball effect of the outside world reflecting back into us, those shifts and changes. So like career, job, relationships, um, some sort of bigger factors in our life start shifting around. And honestly, when I was doing consultations, when I would ask people, you know, like, what's your ideal life in six months? If it could be any way you wanted, every single client I had was obtaining those things earlier than the six month period. And these were things they thought were like impossible. So it's pretty remarkable how they can, you know, shift and change things on the inside. And it's really not, you know, when you think about it, life is kind of simple. It's not like we need that many things from the outside. It's more like our perspective of things and our experience of things. Are we spacious and calm and joyful and loving? Or are we just like on our last thin nerve and everything is like setting us off, right? We have the capacity to be both ways. Our natural state is the former. So the flower essences are really just, they're not doing anything to us. They're really just taking away the static so we can experience ourselves at our, you know, highest capacity and fullest potential. That changes over time. We may notice at first that it's just a sense of well-being and, you know, ability to respond instead of react. I also know people who've been taking flower essences for years and they say it completely changed my life. It changed my relationships. It changed my job situation, how I see the world, and so on and so forth. Yeah, the, we, we talk about that in our mind body uh, fertility group, um, shifting your perspective, because a lot of people dealing with infertility, 
like if someone else is, if they see a pregnant person or if they're like the baby shower, there's like a lot of triggers that then go down the rabbit hole and then they're, they're done. Um, whereas being able to, to, to shift how, how you see things. And so it sounds like this how happens to how helps to open up versus reacting versus responding and to be able to, yeah, yeah to say tap into your true essence. Yes. The mm-hmm. highest part of you, you know, when you think of you, the you, that's like the most beautiful you, it's, it's really like magnifying that and making that stronger so that the, the parts that are essentially believing in things that aren't true, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what the most of our pain and suffering comes from is believing in thoughts or emotions that aren't really, really true. Um, so it's, it's bringing our, our truest, most resonant self more to the surface. And yeah. that sounds kind of woo-woo. It, I mean... No, but I think that's important because a lot of when back to people that are struggling with infertility, it's or or on a, a journey to conceive, it's more they may not be able to visualize themselves with the baby. They've lost hope. They're in this very dark spot. So this is almost getting getting them back to believing, like just knowing in their soul they'll be a mother. Yeah, can you maybe speak about something like that about the, just like knowing something's going to happen? Right. Yeah. Flower senses tend to have this quality of infusing us with right the knowingness like a settledness it dissolves the sort of anxious spinning around looking for reaching for trying to find what am I trying to find what's wrong with me why am I why is my body failing me why is my body my enemy what am I not getting right here I think it's just so often that we turn towards ourselves and don't take the response of being our own best friend we tend to attack ourselves right to be really hard on ourselves and get into these ruts of deep disappointment and disillusionment and that's where the flowers really just sort of like pop us out of that mode because we know that doesn't help us either and then we get hard on ourselves that we're hard on ourselves it's just like the spiral right so then you think of like a flower they're just they just are they're just like out there radiating out into the world and so bringing some of that energy into us is always a good thing. Yeah, just to be able to feel that because, as you say, yeah, that constriction and then the the pushing, pushing where this is just allowing us to to sit in where we are and and that story that we keep telling ourselves of whatever. And in this case, maybe an RE has told us, "Sorry, you'll never conceive. You won't be able to use your own eggs." Blah blah blah, which are very powerful words that get stuck in our subconscious, right. and we've we've lost hope. So this kind of helps to get back to your true essence and really, yeah, listening, listening to your body too, as to what it needs. My flower essence teacher used to say, and obviously this is not scientifically corroborated, but my flower essence teacher used to say that one of the things they're so powerful at doing is that the essences will quiet down, you know, so in our, in our DNA in every little cell, we carry information for up to six to eight generations back in our family lineage. We know this once we hit our like mid thirties, we start saying things and like, oh my God, it's not just like my mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what the flower essences are doing is quieting down those voices, so to speak, or those patterns, emotional patterns, because we might think, oh, we're really unique in terms of what we're thinking, but it's the same thing that our great grandmother thought and that our great grand, right? There's some repetition that just comes down in our lineage. And so that whole level of monkey mind talk that's actually doesn't belong to us that's just in our cells from our family lineage will quiet down as well as any socialization that's not true as well as any like what you're talking about like people's messaging that has been implanted in us this is possible or isn't possible or you know whatever that is it sort of releases its grip on us um, so that we can again then tune into what is really real for us and what our sense of knowingness is. Yeah. And that really, that sense of peace. Yeah. And just when you have that, right, then you have the ability, you as a person to just full bloom and what better state to try to conceive in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you also talk about it being able to, to ground us because obviously these flowers are coming from the earth. So we're taking them. We, we feel more grounded. How does, how does that work? Or what's, what's your take on that? 
Right. I mean, there are so many things in our modern life that are ungrounding to us. If you just, you know, think about the level of social media distraction. I love social media, but, you know, I do notice it sort of like speeds up the mind. The amount of, you know, digital, computer, all of that sort of EMF radiation. We want to eat lunch, but then something comes up and then we push it off and then we don't eat at the right time. That creates excess air in the body that makes us, you know, so there are all these modern life factors that are ungrounding to us. We don't spend enough time in nature and sunlight. I mean, that the list is endless. So by taking into our bodies or on our bodies, you don't have to take them internally. You can use them externally. We, it's like infusing ourselves with that essence from the earth, like what you're saying just totally grounding us. And there are some that are more grounding than others in terms of, you know, some flowers will make you feel more buoyant and light and laughter and giggling and other flowers help you just center into a strength that nothing can stress you out. Hmm. Which ones are those? So there's a blend. (laughs) I'm thinking of this blend that we have called inner peace. And that's just like super solid, like confident, nothing can move you from your center. Hmm. That one sounds good. (laughs) The, the, the laughter one is, is inside a formula that we have called joy juice. Even if you just use it a few times in one day, you already notice at the end of the day, you notice yourself laughing more and making other people laugh. Huh. Okay, and so share a little bit about, about um, the flash mob and flowers. I saw that on your website. I thought that was pretty cool that you're going to different places. and, uh, and- Yeah, so it, it started out when we were launching the book, we you know, just had book launch parties, essentially. Our first one was in New York City. It was incredibly beautiful. We had mandalas, flower mandalas over the floor and huge screens with time-lapse flowers blooming and hummingbirds. And it was really lovely. And for us, it was just like a celebration. And we had so many people come up to us at the end with tears in their eyes, like, I really needed this. You have no idea. And we were like, what did we do? Needed what? You know, and so it just, started it got us into this mode of like we need to have these events regularly it's allowing people a space to just be and not go 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 do 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 it allows them time to reconnect with what's most essential and important to them and it gives them an experience of the flower essences and to be around other people who are who are into that kind of thing as well so we just had our 17th flower lounge we've had them all over the world this last one was in chicago and we recently started pairing together with these events what's called the flower flash mob where the day before after we go into the city and have these huge bags of flowers and just give out orchids or roses at random to people. And it's been a really interesting experience. Uh, Well, it's a good practice in rejection because about half the people say no. Oh, interesting. Which is unexpected. And then you think like, you right, you know, the beginning, it's like, what's wrong with me? Well, there's nothing wrong with you, right? There's nothing wrong with your beautiful flower. (laughs) They just said no. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. half of them say no hmm. yeah I, I wonder if that's different if, if, if you only done it in the in north america or have you done it in europe like yeah so far only in north america okay okay we'll have to seeing other countries if, if it would be yeah it's almost that it was that hug challenge too or i'm not sure where that hug challenge started or the i thought it was more in europe wasn't it i don't know yeah but yeah i mean some people are open to receiving some not It is an amazing practice of presence, you know, just like having this moment with another human being and offering them something. Mm -hmm. I've gotten into the mode where now I don't say anything. I don't speak anything. I just put the flower in front of them as like gesturing for them to take it. They kind of scan my face. Hmm. Does she have an agenda? (laughs) She looks great. (laughs) There's no agenda and then they just. So I think it's a good practice too on the receiving end for receiving. I think a lot of times we have a hard time receiving Mm -hmm. and you know, as women, sometimes growing up in Western culture, we, we want to be able to like do it all, handle it all, do what the men do. And I think, you know, this day and age, it's about learning how to really receive, learning how to accept help, learning how to accept nourishment. Yeah. And, and share, and share with us about um, how you travel the world looking for these flowers. Cause that t- sounds to me pretty fun. So <laughs> what, what do you do for that? It's really fun. Yeah. So we're constantly evolving, constantly collecting new flowers. Every year we take about, I would say two to three collection trips. You know, we've collected flowers all over the place from all over North America to Iceland was really fun. Costa Rica, India, 
Southeast Asia. And the idea is that we are constantly evolving. The world is constantly evolving. So rather than, you know, have a set of flower essences and then just use them for the rest of our lives, which would be helpful, maybe new, I don't want to say diseases because it's not physical. Maybe new patterns will emerge. Maybe there's something in our collective consciousness that's happening that needs healing. Things are surfacing all the time, right? Changing constantly. And so Mother Earth will present flowers at the right time for the right people. And so we put ourselves out into the wild and basically ask to be guided to what those flowers are that we most need as a collective consciousness here on the planet. Crazy, but somehow it always works. And we get confirmation. I mean, that's the thing that just blows me away on these collection trips is that, you know, we may be like searching for some sort of like rare orchid and then there's one cloud above us and the rest of the sky is clear and this one little cloud starts thundering and raining on top of us. So it's like pretty miraculous, that part of the business of searching for flowers. We don't have to kill the flowers. We can, there are different ways of collection that you can leave them, like if they're really rare and endangered species, that you don't have to harm the plant. So that's kind of the nice thing. And it's not like essential oils where you need pounds and pounds of roses to get one drop of rose. It's a very, very small amount of plant material that's required for many, many, many years of, of remedies. It's very sustainable. So how would you collect it then? It's a called a solar infusion process where you would want to find the plant that's out in nature not affected by humans or pesticides or anything like that. It needs to be right at its full bloom point. We typically collect around moon cycles like full or new moon because the energy will be the most concentrated. That may sound funny to people, but that's something that, you know, old winemakers and grape guys have known for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And, and then essentially it's either bending over the plants or you remove the flowers and, and put them on the surface of water in a clear glass bowl the light from the sun will transfer the qualities from the flowers into the water water is sort of like a recording device and then we add alcohol remove the flowers do several dilutions similar to the homeopathic process and then by the time you end up you have this solution that can impact your mood and your state of mind and yet it doesn't have any physical components of the plant. So even people with really severe allergies can still use the flower essences. Hmm. And then when you're planning this trip, so you're just, is it, because it's going to sound really woo-woo. So you're just like, where does it, where am I going? Or is there some sort of plan where you're like, oh, there's a really cool endangered both. species over here. Okay. There's both. <laughs> a little, both. A little both. I mean, more recently it's been really fun to identify things that are hard to find and then try to go and find them. Mm-hmm. But also we're super open to things just popping up on our path. And what was one of your, your best experiences or, or, or something that you want to talk about as far as finding a, a certain flower? I mean, so many different experiences that I can tell you about the first collection trip that sort of blew my mind. The first major, you know, I had been making flower essences, but I went to British Columbia. It was kind of like a crazy turbo marathon. I don't think I've ever done it like this since then, but we made 15 flower essences in one day. And so I got up in the morning. It was like an eclipse day. It was a fabulous moon day. I did some meditation, some Tai Chi. And then I went out to the woods basically and was like, what do people need? Like, what does humanity need? And there were two different pathways and I was deciding which way to go. And this massive black bear came out and you know, stopped on one of the trails and looked directly at me and then went off into the woods. And I thought, damn, I'm going to take that as a sign. <laughs> okay. yeah, that's a sign. Yeah. So I went down the path that he had just crossed gingerly, quietly, and kept walking. And then eventually a, a butterfly came and circled around my head three times and landed on a flower. So I thought, well, maybe I'll collect this flower. And then I kept walking and there was this beautiful snake that went like from one side of the path to the other a foot in front of my feet into this patch of white flowers. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a sign. That was the weirdest and most bizarre trip in that I felt like the animals were all showing me which flowers to select. I have never to this day had the similar experience where the animals all came out and were so instructional, mm-hmm. let's say. But what's really fascinating is to know that in retrospect, those flowers were the most 
popular and continue to be some of the most widely used. So for example, the, the first flower that the butterfly landed on was for healing old wounds of the heart. Who doesn't need that? It's like the most needed flower essence in the United States. We put it in this blend called Infinite Love and it's for self-love and attracting love. Everybody wants and needs that. Mm -hmm. The snake that went into the patch of white flowers, that was yarrow, which is the number one flower essence for helping our bodies revitalize after being on the computer and the cell phone for such long hours, for flying on airplanes, even things like nuclear radiation. So I know it sounds strange and in the moment it seemed a little odd, but we just have gotten into the habit of following, or I've just gotten into the habit of following it, seeing where it leads me, and then waiting for the proof to arise later on. Afterwards. So it's really when you're there, you're putting in this glass bowl, the flowers, just the petals, and then, and then oh. distilling it. And so how do you keep it? How does that little bit keep for ages to use as elixirs? Kind of like you could think of it, if you wanted to think of it in a more physical realm, it would kind of be like kefir or... Kefir. Okay, like, oh, like the mother kind of thing. The mother, exactly. That's what we call it, the mother. Oh, I get it. Okay. Yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> And so you offer some retreats. Maybe share with us what exactly those entail. Yeah, so we've been doing a lot more trainings, workshops around different cities. We are also purchasing a really large building here in Phoenix, which will facilitate the ability to do a lot more of that um, in the following year. But we do have one really amazing retreat in Costa Rica this November, November 10th to 17th. And it's a week-long retreat. Um, let's just say it's like experiential training. I don't very much like the style of like lecturing and teaching. It's more like, let's go to this tide pool in the ocean where you can just float and totally relax and learn meditation that way. Or let's eat a piece of dark chocolate and figure out how to be more aware that way. Or let's see what happens when we stare into the sun every sunrise and sunset. What happens to the elements of the body when we do that? So really just, I mean, who doesn't want to take a week off, right? And, and be like good. a few hundred meters from the beach where little baby turtles are hatching and being born and running off into the ocean, but also being able to work in a really small group of women to, I mean, I feel very passionate recently about sort of like equipping women with the tools to be able to go back to their communities and hold and it sounds strange, but like hold sacred ceremonies. I feel like people are really wanting to gather together and be a part of something that's meaningful and profound. And so I would really like to equip women with all the different types of like easy tools that, you know, are easy to incorporate and nobody feels uncomfortable around it. It doesn't have anything to do with religion. It's just very simple. It's like flowers, right? flowers and plants. And so there will be a lot of awareness practices and meditation and introspection and it'll be really amazing. We have a few spots left. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, I do this it's a monthly thing called moon club actually that I'm in. It's part of, um, I was on, on a retreat early in the year. My voice has gone funny right now. Um, early in the year based on the book, uh, material girl in a mystical world by what's her Goodness, oh, uh, Ruby, Ruby Warrington. So see, they, they have Moon Club and they do these, these, yeah, their goal too is to get people to be in their community to talk about the cycles of the moon and being able to see how that's all impacting our bodies and our health and yeah, getting out in the community. So you sort of have the similar thing of, of, so is it kind of training people like this to then go forth and spread the message kind of thing or? Well, yeah, I mean, that, that would be one of the side effects would be you would have enough tools and practices and methods to be able to hold a circle of women in your house if you wanted to. If you don't want to, that's no big deal. It's, you, I should say the other sort of like takeaway from this retreat, you know, because we see a lot of like yoga retreats and mm -hmm. rather than this be a retreat, that's just like you go and kind of lays around or you go and like work yourself with yoga. It's more about learning things about yourself that will change your life forever, that you can bring back into your regular life and have a new sense of awareness to, to like make an actual real shift in terms of how you feel that will be long lasting for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely have a whole real sense. You say you're impatient, but you really have that sense of calm where when you're talking about this, I'm like, I'm coming. But <laughs> yeah, no, <it's, laughs> 
Because <laughs> I'm the kind of person where I'm like, oh, what's this? I'm going to go. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that sounds amazing. I, I, think, I think when it boils down to it, it's when we get a, a chance to back away and get ourselves into the vastness of Mother Nature, you know, whether it's like sitting in a hot spring in Iceland or looking at the ocean in Costa Rica or sitting on a mountaintop or wherever, it could just be like sitting in our backyard, honestly. When we get that real visceral sense of how powerful, like the magnitude of how powerful this place is where we live, we feel very small suddenly. And in that very tiny smallness, we suddenly become the earth. And then it flips and we become that huge vastness and powerfulness. And so you know, there are many different ways of getting there and we try to employ as many as possible in workshops and retreats, but really that's what it's about is, is having this really visceral sense in your body of how incredibly powerful you are as a human being and how supported you are by mother nature. Mm, I love it. I love it. And as far as resources that you could recommend, um, I didn't know you had a book, so let me share a little bit about your book. I somehow missed that. And a, a website or an app or anything that you, that you like, but maybe talk a little bit about your book there. Yeah, so we have a book called Flower Evolution. We also have a card deck that goes with it. The idea is that the flowers reflect back to us what's happening inside of us or what wants to be magnified. And so um, whether it's the book or the card deck, there are anywhere from like 48 to 54 flowers that you visually see images of and you see what you're drawn to. The card deck is a more kind of a quick draw message. You can either use it like an Oracle deck or you can see what you're visually most drawn to to find out where to start with the elixirs first. The book is more deep dive. So depending on the flower you choose, it might say like questions to ask yourself or journal prompts or things, things to take action on what is it that's looking to be magnified in your life along with like, you know, fun flower recipes and things like that. We also have an app that, you know, similar does the same thing where you can choose the flowers you're most attracted to, find out what it means about you. For iPhones, there's like little places where you can journal secretly that no one can find them and where you can track your moods. And the app is called Lotus Way then, is it? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. Okay, great. And uh, any success story you'd like to share with us? Mm. Sure, you have lots. <laughs> I don't know if it may be success, but but something maybe trans transformation, maybe. I have a million, but seeing as your what your topic is, we have had women who swear that they've gotten pregnant because of the flower essences. You know, women who have been told it's never going to happen, or who have had repetitive miscarriages, or who just think for some reason it's not going to be possible for them. And then we get phone calls and we see the baby pictures on Instagram and we just feel like so, so happy. Regardless of the success stories, I can say that I know without a doubt down to the bone in my body that this particular formula um, called Radiant Energy with a pomegranate helps regulate cycles. I've seen like literally thousands of cases of that. Um, there's another remedy that just keeps coming to my mind over and over and over and like knocking on the knocking on my head that I need to share. And that's called wild abundance. Each formula has five different flowers and a gemstone in it. The sort of mainstay of this one is those is a peony flower. You know, when you bury your face into a peony, you just feel like, oh, it's so luscious. And (laughs) it's all about feeling uninhibited and just really open and really grateful for the things we have in life. And when we're grateful, it just draws in more of that. It's helping us just feel really rich and abundant. And so, although I don't yet have, it's a brand new formula, so I don't have specific success stories around that, that keeps knocking on my brain as something that I should, we should share with your community. Hmm. Love it. Wild abundance. And then radiant energy was the, is the pomegranate one. Awesome. And I think you're offering, you have a free download, it's some flower images that they can go to uh, Lotus Way. So Lotus, uh, com. Can you share a little bit about that for us? Yeah. So if you just go to the homepage, you'll see the section of flower images. It's a nice place to start because you can see how it works, that what you're attracted to will reflect something back to you because then you'll, you'll get a link that will show you all of the different responses and, you know, you can see that very definitely why you picked the one you picked because 
percent of the time people really resonate with it. It feels very magical. Like, how did you know? <laughs> but you yourself were drawn to that flower, right? And so yeah. it's your own internal wisdom landscape that's in operation. Yeah, and not and not to question it, to go with it. <laughs> right. Right. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This has been wonderful. I really love delving into this topic and I love flowers. So now it's sort of, de- I'm definitely going to be uh, trying some of your essences. So or your, your elixirs. So I loved it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's such a joy to be with you. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Hey there, Sarah Clark here. So are you struggling to have your baby? First of all, please know that my heart goes out to you. I support couples worldwide who are struggling with infertility to conceive and have healthy babies. Women like Rita, who gave birth to her beautiful daughter after following my fertility coaching system. Or Danielle, who after two failed IUIs was able to get pregnant after a supercharger fertility discovery call with me. So here's how you get my help for free. So I offer a free supercharger fertility discovery call. And on that call, I'll create a plan with you that is going to help you fast track your success. So this call is not for everyone. And I'm really picky about who I get to speak with and I have a strict but totally reasonable criteria that needs to be met in order for us to move forward. So here's who I can help. So first of all, you need to be able to explore your infertility diagnosis in a new light. So this offers for people who are open-minded, they're coachable, and and if you can do that and want to double or triple your chances at the fertility clinic or get pregnant, awesome. So let's get on the phone and chat. Also, you must be an action taker. So someone who's committed to seeing results, you're able to follow directions. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything bizarre. But if you're one of those people who like to consume a ton of information, but don't like to spend time implementing and seeing results, then the call's not really for you. So I only want to spend time with people who are genuinely committed to their own success. So just click on the link in the show notes and apply. Or go to fabfertile, F-A-B-Fertile.com and click on the free consult. So it's a really short application that just tells me about your health, how long you've been trying to conceive, and how soon you like to be pregnant. So seriously, this is going to be the best time you've ever spent on your fertility. Looking forward to chatting. Talk soon. Thank you for listening to Get Pregnant Naturally. Seriously, it means the world to me that you're here. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming episodes. I'm excited to offer you a special gift. If you're a U.S. resident, text FERTILE to 345-345, you'll be prompted to enter your email address and you'll receive our fertility yoga download. In this 20 minute intro video, we focus on a calming and peaceful practice to connect back to your heart. These simple fertility yoga poses can help quiet negative thoughts and make you feel more in control. Download it now and get started today. So for U.S. residents, text FERTILE, F-E-R-T-I-L-E, to 345-345. For non-U.S. residents, go to www.yogafreebie.com to access your special gift. That's www.yogafreebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E, com to access the free fertility yoga download. And I love this quote by Dr. Mark Hyman, medical director of the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine and chairman of the Institute for Functional Medicine. Functional medicine is medicine by cause, not by symptom. Functional medicine practitioners don't in fact treat disease. We treat your body's ecosystem. We get rid of the bad stuff, put in the good stuff, And because your body is an intelligent system, it does the rest. Thanks for listening. Until next time.